This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about an aspect of editing that I get asked probably more than anything about Avid Media Composer, and that is, can I do transfer modes much like I do inside of Adobe's After Effects? And the short answer is, no, you can't. You actually are going to require a third-party plugin to do most of the aspects of transfer modes that you're going to want to do inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, the great thing is that if you're coming from version 7 of Media Composer, you're already going to have the tools at your disposal, one of two of them, to do the method that I'm going to show you. You're either going to have access to Avid Effects or you're going to have access to Boris Continuum Complete. Now, for new editors to Media Composer, I'm going to show you another option you have at your disposal. That is using Genart Sapphire. And last but certainly not least, I am going to show you how you can do the same type of effect without using any third-party plugins at all. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And as you can see, I have some motorcycle racing here. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of take it from about here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my rampant design tools fire element here sort of dictate the length of the shot that we're going to use. So I'm going to take my fire element here. Let's just create a new sequence. here. I'm just going to right click on the sequence window. We're just going to right click and say new sequence. We'll call this fire composite. And let's take again, like I said, our rampant design tools element. I'm just going to drop it into V2. There we go. And like I said, just for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm going to let the fire dictate the length of my bike shot here. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that this rampant design tools element is actually a 3K element. Now, we're only looking at it in 720p, so we do have the ability to zoom in on this element quite a bit. And why don't we actually do that? I actually want these flames to pretty much fill the frames. What we're going to do is I'm just going to right click on my rampant design tools 3K fire element. I'm going to come down to source settings. And it's really inside the frame flex window that we're going to make our adjustments. So I'm just going to adjust the frame flex window right down so that the fire is more or less going to fill sort of the whole frame. Now I can actually see what the fire is going to do here. I don't want to fill the whole frame, but I think this is probably going to be pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just simply say apply and we're going to say okay. Now you're going to notice that nothing seems to have happened inside my timeline. Yet if I call that fire element up here, it's full frame. So what exactly is going on? Well, the problem is that we haven't actually just told Media Composer we want to update the clips that are in our timeline. And that's no problem whatsoever. All we need to do is simply head on over to our bin to our sequence. I'm just going to right click on the sequence and I'm going to refresh the sequences aspect ratio and reformatting options. As soon as I do, you're going to notice that the flames have now jumped to fill the full screen pretty much the way that I wanted them to. Now I think what I'm going to do to start out is I'm going to show you the method to composite this fire over that footage without using any transfer modes whatsoever. So this is assuming you don't have any third party plugins. Now to do this, what we're going to need is we're going to need to take our fire and we're going to need to double it up. So I'm going to create a new video layer, Command and Y on the keyboard, Control and Y for all my Windows friends out there. And we're going to create a mat out of this fire element. So let's do that. What we're going to do, Command and 8 on the keyboard, Control and 8 for all my Windows friends out there. We're going to come down to Image. We're going to come to our color effect here. There we go. Just drag and drop onto V3. Let's step into Effects Mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut for Effects Mode. Again, if you don't have it mapped, no problem. You can always find it right there. Let's just take the color out of this by just dragging the saturation all the way out. Very nice. Now next, we've now created a mat for our fire, so let's add the mat key effect. Again, Command and 8 on the keyboard, Control and 8 for my Windows friends. Let's come down to the key section. What we're going to do is we're going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. We're going to take mat key, simply drag and drop right down to there. And you'll see that our mat is actually reversed. So all we want to do is simply, again, step into effects mode and just invert that key. 
And if we didn't have access to third-party plugins, we'd be all set to go. Now, the only problem with this fire is that it doesn't really stand out the way fire would. It doesn't really impact the image the way that it would. It's okay if you don't have any third-party plugins. Okay? But now let's talk about how we would work with this if we did have some third-party plugins. All I'm going to do is just remove V3. I'm actually just going to delete the layer altogether. See you later. Okay? And what we're going to do is let's start out with Generate Sapphire. So what we're going to do is come to the Effects Palette. I'm just going to navigate all the way down to the bottom here to the Sapphire section. And the effect that we're looking for is in the Composite section. And the effect that we want is called S Math Ops. I'm going to take Math Ops. We're just going to drag it and drop it right down onto the shot. And believe it or not, that's all we have to do. Why? Well, because if I step into Effects Mode, I actually wanted to do this as an Additive Transfer Mode. And guess what? By default, Math Ops is actually set to be an additive operation. So now all I need to do is basically come back and hit play. And there we go. There's our fire element composited as an additive transfer mode over top of my footage. Very cool. Okay. Now let me show you how to do the same technique using Boris Continuum Complete. Now, where is this relevant for Media Composer Editors? Because you're probably thinking, oh, well, Kev, you know, you know, I don't have Boris Continuum Complete. But remember, if you came from version 7 and you had the Symphony option of Media Composer, you had access to Boris Continuum Complete 8. And the effect I'm going to show you was available inside of Boris Continuum Complete 8. We're just going to remove the Math Ops effect from Sapphire here. Let's navigate all the way back up to the top here. We're going to come to the key and blend section and the effect that we want is called appropriately enough composite. I'm simply going to take the composite effect, drag and drop down onto my footage. Of course we don't have the correct transfer mode and that's no problem. You'll see right now it's set to be hard light. I'm just going to come down and switch that to additive and now we basically have the exact same effect coming from Boris Continuum Complete. Now I know of course Media Composer 7 editors are shutting at their screen, but Kev, I don't have the Symphony option. I only had the standard version of Media Composer, so what do I do? Well, you'll remember that you had access to an effect called Avid Effects. Avid Effects is Boris Red rebranded for Media Composer. So let me show you how you do the technique inside of Avid Effects. Now I'm going to be using the Boris Red version of the effect, but everything I'm going to show you works exactly the same inside of Avid Effects. All we're going to do is we're going to come down, in this case, like I said, I'm going to come to the Boris Red for Avid section. You would simply go to the Avid Effects section. I'm going to take the Boris Red for Avid real-time filter. We're simply going to drag and drop down onto our shot. I'm going to step into Effects Mode, Shift and Y, and we're going to launch the user interface. Once the user interface has appeared, the only thing that we need to do is simply navigate to the Composite section. We're going to change our Transfer Mode from Normal to Additive. And believe it or not, all I have to do is simply say apply. We're going to head right back to the beginning of the timeline, simply hit play. Now what's important to keep in mind is that your real-time playback might vary. You'll see this is not playing back in real time, even though it's a real-time effect. But what we actually have here is a 3K clip AMA link to. It not only has the Boris Red effect on it, but it also has a real-time frame flex conversion happening here. And that's why I'm getting some drop frames. Now, if I didn't have FrameFlex on here, this would play back in real time, no problem. But you get the idea of how this is going to work if the only effect you have access to is Avid Effects. So I hope this tutorial has shown you that you do have the capability of getting in and utilizing transfer modes inside of Avid Media Composer. It just takes a little bit of help from a third-party plugin that chances are you already have access to inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.